Don't want to burn my pants up, ladies and gentlemen. Ha! Good afternoon. Yeah, you probably heard me say I don't want to burn my pants up, ladies and gentlemen, because I was standing over my heater here setting up this tripod here, and it's hanging a little forward here. I hope it don't fall over. I got it sitting on top of my uh, little carry-on bag there that I use to put my uh, books in and stuff. Um, I got electric heater up on the bench here. It's very cold. This shop is brutally cold now. I just got in here about 10 minutes ago. And uh, I got the uh, Mr. Heater on the floor over here. And I got, some, uh, I got a bunch of bottle gas so I'm all, all set there. Uh, but it, the, the heater doesn't have a blower on it, so all the heat goes up, so you're freezing down here, and everything on the bench is really cold, so I put the heater up here. I'm going to do a little uh, video here, and uh, for some of you maybe newcomers here, uh, that are just getting into electronics, and the way I do things with no math. Um, as you well know, um, I, I have a, um, a text video up there pertaining to, you know, showing my stupidity uh, for, uh, you know, not knowing my basic math and stuff like that. And I, I have a lot of supporters and I appreciate it. And, um, well, I like to share things with everybody. Maybe good and bad, maybe I shouldn't, you know, uh, so much on the bad ones, uh, uh, I should share the good stuff. Um, taking the um, general ham class, uh, you know, the test, I should say, uh, is something that I'm not dying to get into. It's just that when Mike gave me this... Um, Kenwood Radio, I feel, although Mike didn't say I'd like to you know, get in, he would like to see me get into it. I've known Mike for uh, well over 40 years. And um, he's trying his best to help me out also. But, you know, you got to learn, you know, nobody's going to hand this to you on a silver platter, and I understand that. Now, all these years that I have been doing electronics, as I said so many times, I am a tinkerer. I have never designed anything. Yes, I built some noisemakers and stuff like that with single transistor oscillators, you know, and 500 ohm center trap uh, transistor radio output transformers, making an oscillator and putting a speaker on it, and, you know, little things like that that I used to do in the 60s and uh uh, into the 70s, but um, a lot of this stuff I got off of books and, you know, and, and things like that, and I had good eyesight then so I could work with the small stuff, but it was done on a perf board or usually point-to-point -point wiring, sometimes not even on a perf board, but what I want to show you here, how I do things without using a calculator, um, now, the calculator that I have in the house is smaller than this. It's a Radio Shack. I picked it up at a yard sale. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the calculator. There's something wrong with this. <laughs> My gray matter. Um, I was using the wrong key, uh, and it's not on this calculator. I don't have that key on it. It's a little, like a, it's a funny looking check mark. And I thought that was the divide because when we were going to school, when you drew the long division and short division, you had a line that went up like this and over, and then you put numbers on the bottom and you put numbers on the top and the number on the left. You know, so I thought that little check mark symbol was the divide, but it isn't. Uh, and several of my viewers pointed out something that I should have known is the divide is, you may not see that, here is this key in the upper, the black key in the upper right hand corner, 
here. And it's got the line with a dot above it and a dot below it. Okay, I should have known that. That just goes to show you how often I use a calculator. I use a calculator a lot because I have a, a small account just for eBay, PayPal. Very small account, like $15, $20, sometimes as much as $30. And I buy little things off of eBay and it's a separate account. And I have a tally sheet. Uh, on the side of my computer and how much money I spent each time I buy something for six dollars I'll buy something for five dollars and I'll put that down and I'll I'll subtract so adding and subtracting and once in a while multiplying is all I ever do on a calculator I very rarely divide the last time I divided uh, used division is back in 92 when I took my technicians and passed it how I ever did, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and I had to use a calculator. They permitted a calculator in there. And at that time, yes, I can divide, but I forgot. If I had to take my technician's class test again, I would fail it 100%. But anyways, I've been taking online tests. Eham was another one that... Uh, uh, my buddy Mike recommended, highly recommended, to take those tests. I took one last night, and I got uh, uh, over 50% of the questions that came on that thing. I, don't, I didn't even know what they were talking about. So I guessed. Now, a lot of them I got right, but I got 23 correct out of 35. But it was a wild guess, wild guess, because I never read the book. To be honest with you, I've only started in the beginning introduction on that big ARRL book. So that's as far as I got with it. So anyways, I want to show you here, once this bench warms up, that's why I'm flapping so much, maybe a lot of this hot air will warm this place up too. I think it could get more heat out of this than my heater. Um, I want to show you with, a, with my capacitor meter, which you've seen before. This is like, uh, I don't know, $15 on eBay and it works very well. This is what I use. This or the ICO or my Telemic uh, TO5. And my digital meter. So I'm going to show you, and you probably know, but this is for your newcomers. When I need to know resistors in parallel, resistors in series, okay. If you got, now I know it's an electronic video, but you know, just bear with me because I can't do anything else, it's too cold. Uh, when you got two 100 ohm resistors in series, well you know you don't need math for that, you, you do it up here. Uh, two 100 ohm resistors in series is 200 ohms. Two 100 resistors in parallel is 50 ohms. So resistors in parallel have resistors in series double. Capacitors, on the other hand, and, you know, th these are things that I knew, you know, I didn't forget everything. Two, resist two uh, capacitors in parallel double two capacitors in series half. So if you've got two, um, one microfarad, capacitors in parallel, you're going to have two microfarads, okay? If you've got two one microfarad capacitors in series, in series now, two one microfarad capacitors in series, you should have 0.5 microfarads, and we're going to verify that on the meter. Of course, there's a, they're not going to be precise when you do that because there's a tolerance there and of course the meter isn't going to be uh, you know uh, laboratory grade equipment but it's going to give you pretty close readings so I'm just trying to get this place warmed up a little bit but I want to make a, 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 a mention here I want to thank all I didn't realize I had so many people behind me I and mean, I appreciate it um, you know because sometimes when I do things uh, like I say, I try to show my uh, successes and failures at, at, the, at the same time. I don't usually, uh, 
But then uh, later on when I post it and I say, gee, why did I bother putting that up there? You know, I mean, because it's it's showing how little I know. And I really, when I started reading and looking at these questions and watching, I watched a lot of YouTube videos on, on ham radio and studying. I mean, I'm not just uh, staying on one thing. I'm all over the place. It, it, it's amazing how much... I don't know. First of all, other than shortwave listening, I don't read anything pertaining to ham radio. So all this stuff is like new to me. And 90% of it I won't use. So yes, it would be disappointing if I fail my test. But it's not the end of the world. It would give me a good feeling inside if I passed it. But I'd probably very, very rarely use it. The fact that I got it, and I got this nice radio, then at that time if I passed it, I'll go and buy the microphone for this. But Mike gave me this. He didn't give me a microphone. They don't need a microphone. I have no temptation or interest in transmitting. I wouldn't do that. I uh, am on two meters. And I got the HT right here. But I haven't transmitted on two meters, and I'm going to say 10 years. I used to be on a net called the Horizontal Engineers back in the 90s when I first got it. I don't even know. I think it's still around. It's just a rag chew net. That's all it is. What you did today and this and that on two meter repeater. But I can't hit that repeater in this shop here on an HT. I've had a, uh, I think it was an AR2 antenna on a tree. The tree came down years ago and the antenna got destroyed. But uh, I lost interest in, in ham radio and I'm not really all that interested in it now. Uh, but to have it, you know, it's a good feeling when you go into a ham radio auction and uh, instead of going in and uh, a lot of the guys know me, even though I've been off it for a while, and the fact is that, you know, hey, you know, the general congratulations, you know, and this and that, it's a good feeling, even though I may not ever use it. Uh, I've had people tell me, well, if you want it bad enough, you go for it. That's fine. I agree with that. Um... But it's very, I find it very difficult. Uh, the people that uh, are thinking that it's uh, easy, well, it may be easy for them, but it's not easy for me. I find it so much to remember. Uh, it's not just the math. It's, it's everything. It's, it's um, where you can be and where you can't be. I mean, sure, I got the, I got the chart. Uh, you know, one of my uh, viewers gave me a a list where I can download the chart and print it out. Sure, I can hang it here in the shop. That's not going to do me any good the day of the test. I can't bring that chart in there. You're only allowed a calculator and a pencil. And in my case, a magnifying glass. You know, and that's it. You bring anything else in there, they'll they'll take it away from you or whatever. They, you won't take the, You can't bring notes in with you. You got to remember it up here. And <laughs> you know. Okay, I think it's warm enough now, and I'm going to get you set up on a tripod here, and I'm going to get, I'm going to show you how, and and really, most of you know this. When I work on a radio, which I haven't recently because I haven't got anything in for repair, uh, I um, I test the capacitors, test the resistors. Well, the capacitors get replaced. But any resistors that are off, and if I need to make up something, I use my digital meter, whether it be this one or whether it be this one here or whatever. And if I need to know, if I need a 48,000 ohm resistor, I got, I just go in my box, I try to get something close. If I need to make it up, I just grab an assortment of resistors that I can get as close as possible, put my digital meter on it, and that's it. Let's go to the bench now. I think we can work here a little bit better. Hang on a minute. Let's get started here now.
First of all, tell if I'm even in camera here. Alright, I got my resistors here, so let's get, let's pick out some resistors here. I um, don't know if you're going to be able to see this meter or not. I'm not really set up properly in this shop. This meter does not have a stand on it, so uh, I can't do much about it. It's about as high as I can get it. I'm hoping you can see that. We'll put you on ohms here. All right. All right, what we got here... <clears throat> what we got here... That's a mess. That's what we got here. Not very organized. It never was. Okay, so I got the meter leads in my hand. Okay, I've got three resistors here, and I can't even tell if I'm in camera or not. That's why my videos are so damn long. See, is that the resistors right there? Okay, all right. Okay, so I'll put the meter over here. I give you hearing anything, it's the electric heater. It's brutally cold in this shop. It's getting more better though. Okay, we've got a resistor here that's. And I do everything by the chart. I'm sorry, but I can still, to this day, I cannot read a resistor color code. I can't remember. Certain ones, yes. Brown, black, and green, of course, for instance, is one meg. There's only a few that I always remember. Probably about maybe five out of all the others. I never, never can do the resistor color code. So I always use these. This goes back to uh, gray electronics back in 1964. So... Here we go. Uh, this is a red, it looks like a red, gray, and orange. So red would be two. So red, gray, and orange. So red, gray, and orange is, looks like 28,000. Very, very hard for me to see that. 28,000. Okay, that's 28,000. Let's put it on the meter here. I can't do it. I gotta hold it on. I hope it don't throw the reading off. 2701. That's 20, 2701. This is a carbon comp resistor. All right, so put that over here. Now we get the next one. Looks like brown, red, and brown. I'm not on macro because it, it won't be in focus. So brown, red, brown, brown, red, brown. Brown I do remember is one. Red is two. Brown, red, brown. Let's set it up here. Stop guessing and let's get it set up here on the chart. Brown, red, brown. This is how I've been doing it all my life. Brown, red. Probably some of you guys are just laughing at me now and say, quite out loud, he can't figure that out. It's 120 ohms. Okay? 120 ohms. Let's see what we got here. 100 120 ohms. 120.09. Almost 121. Okay. So the last one is a yellow... Purple, red. Okay. Yellow, purple, red. Yellow, purple before seven. The red, I don't know. Let's see what that is. Four, seven. Four, seven, 4,700 ohms. 
4,700 ohms. Yeah, 4.77. Okay. Hope you can see that. There's nothing I can do if you can't because I just can't get the angles right. Okay, so what I do... Hang on a minute. All right, I clip them all together. And... It's 31.95 ohms, all three resistors in series. Now, now the simple thing would be, the easiest thing when you've got resistors in series is you can add, you add up all three resistors in series, like if you've got three 100 ohm resistors in series, It'll be 300 ohms, so you can you can do that. So resistors in series is not a real problem. It's just a matter of adding, and that I can do. Now, suppose you want to take these resistors and put them in parallel, okay? So I don't even try to do the math on that because I have no idea how to do it. Okay, so what I'm doing is simply taking all three resistors and bringing them in parallel. So what I'm going to do here, for simplification, without getting complex with the wires, is I got my meter on here on this resistor. I'm going to put the other ohm meter lead across this resistor. Okay, and right now we're reading 121 ohms on this. Okay, so if I want to know the resistors that are in parallel, how, what the resistance is of these three resistors in parallel, I just put them all together like this, and I got 117.5 ohms. That's what I've got, 117.5 ohms, 117.6 right now. Okay, so that's what I, that's how I do it. I don't, I don't kill myself trying to do something I can't do with math. Three resistors like this in series, you just add all the resistors together. That is not a problem. What is the problem is if you're doing resistors in parallel. Remember, resistors in parallel will, um, if you have two equal resistances, two 100 ohm resistors, in parallel there will be 50 ohms, okay. In series, two 100 ohm resistors in series will be 200 ohms, okay. But when you've got multiple values like this, okay, you need to use an ohm meter because I can't, don't get me started on formulas, I'm sorry, I can't do them, okay. But, however, if these were three 100 ohm resistors, which is one of the test questions on the ham, general ham test, if these were all 100 ohm resistors, all three of them in parallel, you got three of them, there'll be 33.3 ohms. That I do know. I don't have a problem with even numbers. But if they're all different values and you're putting them in parallel, the only way I can do it, and I think a lot of you may agree on this, use an ohm meter. Don't kill yourself with the damn math, unless you're a math whiz. Okay, we got the calculator here. This is my shop calculator. I bought a yard sale. And as I said, this one don't have the, uh, the check mark on it. I don't think I need macro. I'm about a foot away. If I put it on macro, I think I'll be out of focus. Okay, so here we go with the resistor. I've got to get my my uh, cheat thing here. Okay. Um, now, as I said, these are the same three resistors, and i got to look back the code again. I'm sorry, but red, purple, orange. 
but it would be two seven red, purple, orange, two. That would be two seven. Twenty seven hundred ohms. Okay. So naturally you go two seven zero zero two thousand seven hundred add. Okay. That's one resistor. Now we're going by the resistor code itself, not the actual reading, because these read these are off a little bit. Brown, red, brown. 120 ohms. Yeah. 120 ohms. I have to be I don't trust myself. 120 ohms. So that would be one, two, zero. Okay. And now the last one is yellow, purple, red. Four, seven, and red would be four, se 4,700 ohms. 4,700 ohms. So that would be Seven five two zero seven thousand five hundred and twenty ohms. That's that's the resistance of these three resistors in series. So, like I say, if you want to know, I don't care how many resistors you put in series, you just add up each one, and that's what you'll get. But you use a meter to verify if you want accuracy, because they do drift. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. It's putting odd values in parallel. You have to use a meter. Unless you're a, 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 a calculus whiz or something. Uh, if you're a math whiz, then you'll do it that way. I just take them and I just put them all in parallel like this, put the meter across it, and that's what I get. So I just wanted to make that understanding. That's how I've done it for years and years and years. Use my digital meter. Never really used a calculator. Now we'll shut this off for now. Now let's go into capacitors. All right, here are some random capacitors that I pulled out, and these were already tested. They were pulled out of equipment, I guess. So I had tested them on this. Okay, so first of all, we've got a... Uh, A point oh one five, another point oh one five, and a point oh two two. Okay, so I think we're in view. I hope so. All right, so now If you take, and I have to do some br rack, brain racking here, this may not be in perfect focus because I'm not on macro, because I'm a little too far away and I want you to see the meter. 2.015's in parallel. Okay. Tell you the truth, I can't figure that out in my head. I can't. If that was 2.02's in parallel, it would be 0.04. But 0.015, I have to use a meter. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to put the clip leads on it. We're going to get the meter set here for testing one capacitor and then we'll put the other one on I hope you're in I'm hope I'm in camera view here I really don't have a good 
I don't think I'm ever going to have a good camera boom set up here. It just amazes me some people can do it so good. All right. Now, I'm not getting any reading. i got to find the right range here. Point oh one four. And the meat is cold, so that's point oh one four. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, but close enough to point oh one five. Okay, so now if I want to know what the value of this capacitor combination when I put this one on. Well, I use my meter. I'll just put the lead in here, if I can get it in, and stick it in here like this. And now I got point... No, I don't either. Point O... Got to use clip leads. I cannot hold this on there. Got to use clip leads. very hard to show on camera. It's very hard to do that. So I need to get my face up on it. 0 0.029. Okay. 0 0.029. That's how I do it. I cannot do it by the math. Only if it's even numbers. Like if these were two point ones in parallel, they would be two. They would, then there would be point two was rounding off the numbers, so, you know. Now, if you want these in series, capacitors in series would be half the value. But I can't do it unless I have the meter again. So, we want two capacitors, 2.015s in series. So, let's do it this way. We add here. We get our other point one five, and we're getting we're getting them in the series here, and uh, we connect it to the other lead. Looks like double O seven. Let's see what we got here. I've got 7.5. Hmm. That's weird. Looks like the capacity's gone up. Capacitors in series. These two are in series. But I'm getting 0, 7.5. That's a mystery to me. It looks like the capacity's gone up, but it can't go up. All right, so even using a meter, you can get confused. Let's try a different range here. Now I got 007 here. Here's the decimal point right there, 0 .007. Well, I have no idea if that's half of 0 .015. So I just want to show you that I do a lot of experimentation in my videos. And it's the way I can do it, the only way I know how to do it. Now, a lot of times what I will do is I'll experiment in the circuit. I'll take the resistor or the capacitor, or whatever it is, and if I just want to upgrade to a better capacitor. Let's say the capacitor that's in there is okay, but it's 40 years old, 50 years old, and I figured, well, I might want to uh, upgrade it. And if it's like a, a small value cap, which you put in here, in these holes here, instead of using the leads, I'll take that older cap out if I can, measure the capacity, then go to my junk box, wouldn't be in this one, but it'd be in one of the other ones, and compare it with it. And the one I get closest to 
on the meter is the one I'll use. And I'll do this using this meter, or I'll do it using the ICO 950B, or I'll also do it using my uh, Telemic, my Sprig Telemic T05. So I got three meters that I am using in verifying my readings. And they all jive pretty close, but you need, when, a, when you're doing a small capacity, smaller than this, you don't want to really use long leads. On a .015, yeah, you could, you're okay. But if this was a, 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 a 100 picofarad, 100, 100 micromic, or as far as I'm concerned, 100 nanofarads are all the same. Uh, that's another thing I'm having problems with, that damn nanofarads. There's a question on that, on that too. They threw it in a nanofarad in there, and to me, it's the same thing as a picofarad, Mickey mice. There's no such thing as nanofarads when I took this, when I learned this back in the 50s. Anyways, when you got a capacity like a, a 10 picofarads, 100 picofarads, or anything low like that, even 500 picofarads, you want to take the meter, you don't want to use your meter leads. What you want to do is to connect it directly to the meter and don't involve the leads because the leads add capacity. The same with the Sprague Telemic. If I'm going to be reading a very low capacity, I take out the leads and put the capacitor directly on here. These leads here are okay for using testing electrolytics and larger capacity. But if you would try to test a large, I mean a small capacitor using these leads here, you're going to add more capacity to that little capacitor, <laughs> maybe quite a few times over, it's going to throw your readings off. You're going to read a much higher capacity. It's going to give you false information. You want to go right on here with the small ones. And a matter of fact, generally speaking, you'd like to be able to always have your capacitor directly connected here, if at all possible, even if you're reading a, a 0 0.05 or a 0 0.1. But it's not going to really matter too much because these aren't going to influence those higher capacities as much as a real low into the micromics and the nanofarad or whatever range, if you get what I mean. I think this thing will read down to 10 picofarads, but I'm not sure. I know the ICO 950 will. Again, on the ICO 950, you remove the leads, and this will read down to 10 picofarads. So, that's how I do things. Your mileage may vary. Thanks for watching.